the cemetery here is the Newton Hill Cemetery, and it's from the 1780s. And um, the parents of the man who built my house, just about a mile down the road, are buried here. His name is Dan Watrous. His, pa his parents are here, Spencer Watrous, and I forget his wife's name. But I've, I guess, I, I, I have reverence for history and those who have gone before us, and I have since 1986 when I learned about um, Dan Watrous and his family. I've come to this cemetery to kind of visit with his parents who I'm sure spent a lot of time in my house. And uh, I, I feel a presence in my house. <laughs> so um, it, this has been a kind of a sacred place to me. So I was very upset to learn a couple of months ago that the site behind me had been permitted with a GP5 permit, which is a, a state permit, which is for uh, minor air source emissions that Secretary Cranser, who's the head of the PADEP, uh, said are minor or little concern to, you know, no concern or little concern to the public. Um, and I had been watching in the Pennsylvania Bulletin for the plan approval, which must be published uh, in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. And it didn't appear, yet I saw a, a permit come across the DEP EFATS, and I saw that this was staked out. So I made some phone calls and found out that they'd used a GP5. I didn't know what a GP5 was, but it's covert. It does not have to be made available to the public, and there's no chance of public participation with commenting or public hearing. So um, that, that was the first thing I found out. not going to be the two-engine compressor that the perm the permitted. I actually did a file review uh, with Matt Walker from Clean Air Council. We had to go down to Wilkes-Barre to see the air quality permit for this. Um, and that's how I know that, that the initial permit was for a two-engine compressor. This is a 54-acre site, and it's very evident right now that this is the beginning of the Constitution Pipeline, which is a transmission line, a 30-inch transmission line that's going to have a system of gathering pipelines, you know, coming into this um, to gather the natural gas. So you're going to have a large compressor pressurize the gas. Um, the Constitution Pipeline is in the pre-file stage with FERC, and it's supposed to be 128 miles. So you're going to have to have a compressor that's going to really pressurize the gas to pump it through and move it through the system. They want it to go up to Albany. Uh, the compressor not only pressurizes the gas to, to move it to market, that's industry term. It also finishes the gas, it cleans it. They just want the methane, and Frank, jump in if there's anything I'm missing. They want the methane, so at the compressor, um, they're stripping out the water, so you're gonna have condensate tanks, which uh, it has condensate, brine, produced water, whatever, there's different you know, terms for it, and that is gonna be water stripped out of the gas, but you're also going to have traces of methane and volatile organic compounds. Um, the major groups are benzene, toluene, ethylbenzene, and xylene. And the acronym for that is BTEX chemicals. Um, so the, the produced water is collected in a tank that has traces of BTEX and other things, and you're going to have air emissions off those tanks. Uh, the compressor is permitted by the state to emit hundreds of tons per year of what my state calls a HAP, a hazardous air pollutant. And, you know, hazardous air pollutants are things like, and they permit things like formaldehyde, the BTEX I mentioned before, benzene, toluene, ethylene, um, and benzene, or ethylbenzene. Uh, you have ground level ozone precursors emitted, you have sulfoxides, you have things permitted. At, at hundreds of tons per year that they know causes health issues in people like respiratory problems, nosebleeds, neurological symptoms. Um, you can have trees die because of ground level ozone. Um, so I, I think that underscores that this, this is going to really affect the public health of the entire community. And the VOCs, they're heavier. so. You know, any methane that leaks, and you have fugitive emissions of methane here too, but the VOCs are heavy, so they're going to roll down the valley. 
Like when you get up in the morning in the, in the winter time and you see wood smoke going down the, the valleys, that's what VOCs are going to do. And I live down the valley. Um, so you have a huge issue of, of, of air quality with the compressor. Um, you also have the pipelines. This area, this is class one according to FERC. A class one area has 10 or less inhabited homes per square mile. And the way they arrive at that is they look at a mile of pipeline, they look 220 feet on either side of the pipeline, and if you have 10 or less inhabited homes, meaning people living there full time, it's class one. Class one, you have no routine inspection of the pipelines, and you have no emergency plan for people living there. Um, to quote the head of safety from FERC, it, it was in a, an AP article, in class one areas in case of pipeline explosions, hopefully only trees and forests burn. So we become, you know, collateral damage. You know, they're willing to marginalize the value of our lives and we become the necessary sacrifices that Dr. Engelder speaks of. He's from Penn State and he, he will, to, he, he did, you know, two months ago there was a, a seminar he gave, he called it fair pooling, which is really force pooling, or I, I would call that eminent domain. You won't have the right to say that you don't want drilling on your property. The state's going to take that away from us. And Engeller started out the, the seminar by saying, thank you to Dimmick for being the necessary sacrifice and doing your patriotic duty. I mean, he, he, he actually says that, necessary sacrifice. Um, and Rig Zone, which is an industry publication, had been using uh, the term industrial sacrifice zones of Pennsylvania. And that's where we are. You're looking at us, you know. I'm a necessary sacrifice, according to Dr. Engelder and to um, Burke, I guess. Um, and I just found out uh, from a woman who lives um, in Chester, Pennsylvania, she's been studying pipeline safety for a while because she has three pipelines in her property, one of which is a 30-inch um, transmission line, a Williams Transpel. Uh, because of that 30-inch transmission line in her field, she is in an area of high consequence. I'd never heard that terminology, and I asked her, what is that? And she said, the industry has a formula, and she sent it to me. They have a formula for figuring out the area of high consequence, meaning your toast. It's a kill zone. And um, they take the diameter of the pipe, the pressure of the gas, the type of gas, and a couple of other variables, and they figure out the radius. Now, for her, just having a transmission line, it's a two-mile radius. So I would extrapolate from my own situation. I live like a mile down the road from here. This is going to be a 30-inch transmission line, but you also have a compressor and all of the feeding lines coming in. So if you have an explosion and a fire, and you have a two-mile, at least a two-mile radius that's a you know, area of high consequence, not only is that my house, but it's also about 19 gas wells and well pads. So, so it's just amazing that, I mean, this is America. <laughs> I'm just wondering, you don't have anything, you're trespassing. I get a side of the... You know what, though? I thought that, I mean, this was probably built in 1787, right? That was put there, what, a month ago? And I think that in, there, there's some law that if land is is used for so such a, for a period of time, then it's okay. So I would think even if the surveyors said, oh my God, in 1787, they built their rock wall on the wrong side, I think that legally this is the cemetery's property. So to me, that's just another yeah, violation of... I think you're, this is their property, though. Oh, this property? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not going to worry about it. So just as long as we're on the subject. Yeah, and look at this. There's no reason to put an orange blaze on a, on a wall that's in a cemetery. I mean, and to put the stake here, that's so sacrilegious and disrespectful to to the whole community. Um, and and they, they come in and they, they, they just have no sense of respect for the people who've lived here and gone before us. And 
also, by using a GP5 to permit this, to jumpstart construction, they totally evaded FERC regulations to do environmental impact studies. Because had they, it's called segmentation, and I, apparently Williams is really good at doing this. Industry, I mean, they've been doing this you know, probably for, for decades. I'm just learning about this now. I'm just one person. I don't have a team of corporate lawyers to go study laws and, and all that. But um, segmentation is what they've done here. And they started construction of a large you know, project that will be under federal jurisdiction, but they started it with a GP5 permit at the state level, which means they circumvented doing the environmental impact studies. They're supposed to be to do social and cultural studies too. I mean, and look at this. Would you call this respectful of culture and, and anyway, the community? Hmm? I'm rambling. No, no, it's good. It's good. And you mentioned this this thing that that uh, this ter terrorist act. You know, this idea that if you photograph this, you're considered a terrorist. That's, that's kind of at the crux yeah. of all this. And actually, um, there was something about that a while ago. I forget where I read it, but. Um, I think that what they're, what they're trying to, to make the case that this is a national security issue, they're acting that way already. I mean, um, the former head of, home of National Homeland Security, Governor Ridge, uh, who was hired by the Marcella, Marcella Shale Coalition about two years ago for $900,000, and I think it was part-time, um, he, he framed natural gas as a national security threat. And around that same time, it became uh, known that um, Pennsylvania Homeland Security had contracted with an Israeli intelligence firm to spy on gas activists, and um, kind of creepy. They were lumping us in with, uh, you know, Al Qaeda, and um, showings of gas land were considered a terror threat. So, you know, photographing. I think you've experienced around here. If you photograph. People come out and act as if it's illegal to photograph, even from a public road. Um, so yeah, so Governor Ridge started the framework for national security. I think two weeks ago, Leon Panetta, who's the head of the CIA, restated that, that energy is, is a national security issue. So they're already framing it that way. So it's very simple to connect the dots. Anybody who speaks up about air and water and their concerns about the way the industry is, is developing, you know, it's, how, it's not a far uh, leap to call you a terrorist because you're acting, you know, contrary to national security. It might sound crazy, but that construct is, is actively being floated here. You know, and um, industry has already, um, I know of one incident where WPX at a, at a vendor show showed photographs of four of us, me, for my, uh, for my association with Clean Air Council, my concern about air, uh, Vera Scroggins, Craig Stevens, and Alexander Recordo, and they actually showed our photographs and our names and the associations that were, you know, bad uh, on, a, on a, a screen, and they told people not to talk to us because of that. Now, I know this because one of my friends, her son-in-law works for Heinz Oil. I've been a Heinz Oil customer since 1986. So, so, so now Heinz Oil is, is being told that they should stay away from me because some, for some reason I'm a threat. Uh, it's kind of strange, but it creeps into your life insidiously. Good. Very good. I like it because it's calm, it's clear. Is that calm? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I ramble. No, it's good. Let's get out of here. The mosquitoes. Mm. Uh. Yeah, and I think sometimes I wish I were crazy. I wish I could just say, "Oh, you're crazy." You know? I, I told I, you that. I wish I were just crazy. There's something about this picture that is like. <laughs>